I like them. I think those are cool. Last week, and in fact, for a couple of weeks, I've been telling you that this lesson would be about betrayal. I need to apologize because it is the next one that is. This is about dealing with the mind, the journey to the mind. We've watched these Star Wars battles and the, and the fight of the Lord Jesus Christ and, the, and countering Satan and counting, countering the fallen angels. And individuals on earth, Adam and Eve, Daniel, have been brought in have been brought into these battles in forefront. So many of them we, we see spiritual, I don't want to use the word physical, but we, we get an insight into spiritual battles that are going on. But yet we see physical battles with the example of the Lord Jesus Christ and the temptations. The, as he walked the earth, and last week's lesson with divinity uh, versus demons, we saw Christ talk, walking up to real people talking, going into towns, and everybody being healed, and all the demons being cast out. And we looked at a few that I thought were really, really important stories to look at, but the power of, of that lesson was not necessarily the individual stories, but that just like in one verse in passing, he said, and he healed all manner of illness and cast out all the demons in the region. And that should just blow us away of the power of the Lord Jesus. All those were individual lives that had their lives changed. I'll tell you what, Christ changes lives. Just get them to Jesus. We've got to get them to Christ. That does not change. Our, our, if you're new to us, where did this series come from? Lucifer was called the morning star. Jesus Christ in Revelation says, I am the bright and morning star. He always has been. And the battle, of course, was Lucifer fell, the morning star fell, but Jesus, the bright morning star, reigns. And there's always, it's a story of, of good and evil. It's a story of confrontation. It's a story of defeat in some areas, and it's a story of victory, ultimate victory. Thing is, I think you know the last chapter. I think you sort of know how things end, would be my guess. The defining statements of the lessons that we've looked at so far, and there's been a verse, a statement that has come out of every lesson, and I'm putting these up here for us each time. With, with Lucifer, he said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of heaven. That was at the lesson called the fallen. Then we looked at paradise lost. The Lord said to Eve, what in the world have you done? When she took the fruit and ate. And lesson three was the battle for us, and that was Job. And his wife came to him after all these, all these losses and deaths and, and terrible things that had come his way, the testing. His wife said, Job, just curse God and die. Why don't you give it all in? That's all, all you've got left is the grave. Curse God. Moses in the middle was a story about Michael wrestling and debating and and the conquest of who gets the body of Moses. This is just in one short, short verse in the Bible. And Michael, even the archangel, in, in confronting Satan, has to say, the Lord rebuke you. The, powers, uh, the power of the angels is in their creator, the Lord Jesus Christ. As in the power for the Christian is in the Lord Jesus Christ and the blood of Christ. Nothing has changed. It's the same. The portal in Persia was all about Daniel, and angels, angel, Daniel had an angel come visit him three weeks late saying, hey, I've been held up because I've been battling the evil that's going over here in the capital with Cyrus on the throne. And so Michael shows up to lend assistance to push back the evil that goes on. And we got an insight that understand that there is a warfare going on for the world and for the cities and the, and the states and the politicians. There's a war going on for the hearts and the lives of people in the world. Number six was, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him alone shalt thou worship. That was Jesus telling Satan. And last week was, I know who you are the Holy One of God. And that's when Jesus, it seemed each time that somebody was possessed with a demon that we read about, they 
Number one, acknowledge who he is. And number two says, are you here to destroy us, finally destroy us? And number three, they would say, pity please don't. Their time of their destruction is yet to come. But Jesus still cast them out and said, get out to show his power that he was the Messiah. Today, it is get thee behind me, Satan. And it deals with our minds. The battle is about our minds today. And it's a short story, but some principles from Scripture for me to leave with you and for you to walk away from today. I want to be very practical today. And I should tell you this. We will finish this lesson today and we will be in number nine next week. And we are moving along. These are some of these short ones, but the short ones tend to be very powerful ones. Matthew chapter 16. Last week, by the way, I left off the life of Jesus and the confrontations with Satan. I left it off in the week of, his, of the last week of his life before he went to the cross, a few days before that, and we walked away from that. We pick it up because now there's not, there's not Satan and there's not demons because he's back in Jerusalem, he's preparing to go to the cross. And so one, it's one of his own that he has a problem with. And here it is. From that time forth, Jesus began to show unto his disciples how that he must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, far, Be it far from you, Lord, this shall not be unto you. Oh, I like Peter. He, ju he jumped the guy. But you know what? I still love Peter. I like the guy. You ever put your foot in your mouth? Anybody here? I do. Anybody speak before you really sh wish you'd regret it? Or you go home and you knew the, just, just the right thing to say, but you didn't say it then. And Peter sort of was, Peter sort of was that way. He would, many times he'd jump the gun on some things. But he turned... This is Jesus, and said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense to me, for you savor not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Remember that statement there. Not get thee behind me. We're going to look at that. But don't let that, I'm going to leave it. That's what I'm saying. Remember this last verse, because he turns, he says something to Peter, then he turns to the group and he has left that. And he makes the statement, if anybody is really my disciple, let him come after me and deny who he is and take up his cross and follow me. Sort of sounds like what is, the, what is our motto that's in on the wall in church? You know, to follow the Lord. Think of the verses around the back of the church. Look at them next time. Key phrases that Jesus said. For whoever will save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what is a man profit if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Okay. This is an experiment. Do you see the first two lines? Can you read them? Okay. Our attention, can you, back row, can you read it Okay. Okay, those were blue until this week. Okay, I'm experimenting with colors with you because the blue was too dark. Okay, you have to tell me that. I get all excited because I sit in front of a computer. When I'm sitting and I'm up here reading this stuff, I, I think, this is so cool, I put blue on there. That doesn't take much to excite me because I don't understand what they know in that back booth up there. They do all sorts, they could probably blow the color of the rainbows on here and have rockets shooting across the screen. And I, I know they could. We're not doing that. Okay, so th the highlights are going to be that. And I think I'm going to try one other thing with them that I'll get to. Okay, our attention today involves Simon Peter and the Lord Jesus. The other 11 disciples are drawn in, as well as all followers of him. You re remember what we just read about following the Lord and being his disciples and denying ourselves. The key issue and lesson, though, it's taught, it was about Peter, but today the application is really about you and me and the battle that goes on for our mind. 
Matthew 16, 23, But he turned and said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. Offense in the Greek means, say, you're a stumbling block. I trip over you. I have a problem with that. The Lord says, I can't. Really what he was saying was, I need, stop. There's a, we're putting a rock in the road right here. Stop where we are, and we need to correct something. Peter, you need to listen to this and what's going on. And he says, you are an offense to me, a stumbling block, for you savor not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Okay, the word savor in the Greek means to have in mind. But let me tie it in. You'd say, well, why did the English, why did the King James people put the word savor there? Because they were talking about, it's like savoring food. Oh, there are just certain things that you just hate to go down because you just like to savor it or the, all of a sudden your plate is empty and you don't get any more of just that. There are just, you know, there's just some things that my mother cooked that I just remember I can smell them now and I can taste them. I, in my mind, can still see and taste and remember my mind brings up the taste of the cornbread that my, mother, my grandmother would make, my mom's mom. She would do, bake, bake us a pan. Granddad was dead. She lived up the Ohio Valley, poor, poor as dirt. Poor as dirt. She didn't have anything. And uh, she would, but she'd bake that cornbread when we'd go home. And she'd hand, she, mom help her get out there and put in wax paper. Anybody use wax paper anymore? Okay, I shouldn't have asked. I'm sorry. I just, my, wife hasn't, my wife hasn't made, I mean, asked me to uh, go to the drawer and pull out wax paper. I'm good with the saran wrap and, and, and the uh, aluminum foil. I do real good with that. Did you know aluminum foil still makes great balls to throw and stuff? That's cool stuff. But mom had wrapped that up, and, it, and by the time we'd get home seven, year, seven hours later in the car, it would all be gone, but I remember exactly how it tasted. I hated for it to go. Didn't she give you buttermilk with it? No. Don't think, don't, don't get there, don't go there. Oh, you'll run a good thing. <laughs> I don't like buttermilk. Buttermilk cornbread. No, 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 no buttermilk on cornbread. Butter, butter on hot cornbread. And on cold bread, honey is okay too. But you could today you could slice and put an apple fritter in between, and I'd love it. That would do it for everybody. So what he was saying was, Peter, you've got. He says you've been savoring in your mind wrong things. Your mind's not in the game plan. I'll put it real easy to you. He said, Peter, you got stinking thinking. You do. You got stinking thinking. You're not, you're wrapped up in other things and they need to get your mind where it belongs. Jesus was not calling Peter Satan here. He was not calling him Satan at all. He was saying that Peter's thought originated with Satan. He explained by saying, you don't have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. It's interesting that Jesus straightened Peter out and told him in the next verses, and in that verse, exactly what his thinking thinking was and how he needed to be thinking. All right, the, It was the game plan that Peter, all of a sudden Jesus says, I've been teaching you all along. I'm here. With it. We're less than a week that I'm going to the cross, but I've told you I'll, I'll come back to life again, and I'll come back, uh, I'll go to heaven, and I shall return. He said, I'm preparing you for that. And these guys for three years were brought into that slowly, into that cycle. And then Jesus says, we're going, it, we're going to Jerusalem, and it's it. And the, that's the game plan for me to go to the cross and die for the sins of the Lord. I'm, you've already said, I'm God, I'm the Messiah. Peter's already said that. And so he comes up with this idea that his mind was elsewhere. As God's people, I think sometimes it's so easy. Satan, go, Satan just loves to go after our minds and his minions. But we, we destroy our minds a lot of ways. 
We just get into stinking thinking and we get all wrapped up on ourselves. We get up wrapped up in issues. And could I say this? We get wrapped up on TV and politics and Republicans and Democrats. And we get living, we get living for things that we used to live the, for the Lord for. And Jesus Christ was first in our life. And we get led astray or we get distracted. And it's not good at all. The battle of today's lesson is all about the mind. Your mind, mine. And what is the focus? We need, I think we need to renew our minds. And I'm going to bring you a couple things today. And these, when I'm done with the seven things, you get to go home. Amen? Well, that was a... I can see I'm with a, with a, a vocal lot today. I can see we're ready to rejoice and praise. Did you use it all up in church? I hope not. I hope you've come rejoicing with the things of God and what God's done for you. It's, it's really good. It is. There's a, a, I, don't want, I don't like to share a lot of my McDonald's adventures with you because there's people there. And I, 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 I actually am working on these people to get them to come here. Um, there's, there's one that actually the first guy that I met that he's just all by himself, never married. He's a vet. Um, he's not well. And three days ago, he wasn't there. And we came the next day, yesterday, I said, how are you doing? And he said, I'm, I'm not well. And he said, I just, as, I just as soon, I said, we'll go to the doctor. He says, no, they'll find me at, in my condo. And I said, are you that sick? Well, I found out from somebody else that told me that day that a couple years ago, there's some real issues with his heart and other things, but he'd go to VA for free. He'd go locally for free. But he doesn't do that. His will, his will is on his kitchen table. He has nobody. And he, he said, I've just signed off. In fact, he says, I'll, I read it every day. He says, it, it reads this way. I'm getting real good at it because he's shared it with me a few times. He says, to whoever finds me, do whatever you want to with what's here. And he signed his name. And I saw him today and I tried to talk with him. He's been witnessed to and cry he's very easy to talk to. He's not, never argumentative. Um, Barb Stevens has a friend, it's his wheelchair, Jane. She comes flying in on her wheelchair occasionally. I've seen her take a Bible over and share Christ with him. Um, he knows about the Lord, but, the, but he is probably the biggest example that I could think of right now that is the, a gracious, doesn't do, doesn't cuss, smoke, drink, run with them that do. He's just all by himself. And he likes it that way. When there gets to be a group around him, he actually gets up and moves somewhere else. He just wants to be alone. And, you know, I can tell him, hey, I'm going to pray for you. Every Sunday, he says, I come in, he says, happy Sunday. And I say, happy Sunday to you. I've offered to pick up when he was thinking he's going to move. I said, look, I'll, I'll move you. He said, I don't know how much. I said, I know. I'll throw it in my Jeep and we'll, I'll move you. And I said, I'll jump in my car. I'll take you. Can I pick you up for church? No, no, I don't do that. It's so sad that, that he is probably a picture of the world today. Have you any room for Jesus? You just don't. I'm giving up on him. He's not, I guess he's not doing really well. He said he wasn't. And he talked again about, you know, maybe he's going to go. I don't meet many people like that that are planning that. I am planning to die. I'm planning to fly. Amen. Amen. But I, if I don't, then I will. But when I die, I live again. And this guy doesn't. There's, there's people out there like that, that I'm finding the older that I get, that, that we, could, we could run out and we can win a whole bunch. I could, I could go out right now and find a crowd somewhere and share Christ and lead some people to the Lord. But it takes... Take some time to get him to get him going and get him into church. Sometimes to lead somebody to the Lord, it takes some some time on the front end 
that they don't get saved right away, but you invest the time. Remember, people are looking at us. Whether you know it or not, your neighborhood knows there's something different about you, or they should. They know you're weird. <laughs> they know you are, but amen. Okay, what are they? Number one, as God's people, if we're going to do battle with our mind, we've got to always know and focus on the, it's what in the sports world they call the end game. What's, what's the real goal? If my goal is to get from here to that far door, then if my straight line is, I don't have a straight line there, do I? In fact, there's no straight lines from one place to another in here except that back way and this side way, from wall to wall. But to get there, I would need to go around individuals, and I'd just say those are issues that crop up in our life and, and, and people that God puts on our way and challenges that we get, etc. But ultimately, the goal is that way. Ultimately, for God's people, Jesus Christ is our goal in our growth, in our relationship with Christ, in our witnessing for him, in leading people to the Lord, in our prayer life, in our Bible reading, the focus has to be Jesus Christ. When you wake up in the morning, your feet hit the ground sluggishly, you should say, praise God, I made it through the floor. And you're rolling. And you're going. Here's some verses for you. And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, uh, and your neighbors yourself. Wow. The mind game. We need to love the Lord with, the, what, he just, what Jesus just said, you need, you need to love the Lord with a complete package, you. All of you. You know, the Lord can have your time and you do service for the Lord, but he doesn't have your mind. He needs to have it all. And then I found cool verse. I found the same verse in, in pictures. So I got all excited and I had to put it up there. Each one has one. It's the same verse I just read to you. Number two, we need to understand that our flesh is weak. The controller of our flesh is our mind. Before we go do something with our, stupid with our bodies, sinful with our bodies, we have had to rationalize it's okay where? In our mind. We have to say, well, it won't really matter. I'm not going to hurt anybody. Or I could, God will forgive me. I can do this because I, I can just, the Lord can just forgive me then. I'm a Christian. And he, can, and he will, he can and he will. There may be a price to pay if you start bargaining with God that direction and saying those things with the Lord. But understand that, that the, our mind is extremely powerful. And the power of that mind that we have, it, is, it controls our flesh and it controls our desires and it controls our, our drives. Remember Jack Hiles, famous preacher, and I've told you this before, but repetition is a great teacher. He said the time in between that you... You want to do something wrong and you do it is usually the time in between that is usually spent on trying to justify why something that is wrong is really okay and right. Guess what? I sat there and it's my tongue. I said, Did he ever nail me on the head? I'd, I'd, like, to, I'd like to figure out ways around things. And if you're sneaky and, and in your mind you can play great mind games and rationalize anything. Really can. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. Romans 8, 6. Amen. What a great verse. Number three, freshen your mind anew through daily rededication. Do you remember when, the, remember when church and the churches, maybe some of you have just gone to or have in the past, and even here in days gone by, do you remember when people would come forward, invitation would be given, and just as I am, there were 33 verses, and uh, people would come forward to be saved, and the pastor would say, now you that, you that need to rededicate your lives, you come forward and rededicate your life. 
You know, I've done that. I've done that. But we need to each day walk a, walk a mental aisle and go to a mental altar in our lives. Just to start the day off and say, Lord, this, this is your day. You have made it. I need to rededicate. I, I just I need to start with a clean slate today and live my life for you. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God is in the transforming business. What in the world does that mean, you say? Well, what's a transformer? What's a transformer? Well, I'll get... How many of you guys got Lionel trains when you were kids? Amen. Oh, amen. I'm gonna, we need to start a train club, a Lionel train club, whether you still have it or not. We start a club. You had to have a Lionel train. Well, what powered that thing? You hooked the transformer up to it. That was the power. There was a boom. That was the boost and everything. But what he's saying, and what he's saying was, don't let your mindset get under the world, but you need to, on a daily basis, let the Spirit of God, and I'm going to let you in a little secret, your prayer and the Bible. The Bible is going to play so much the Scripture into all of this, and I'm bringing it into that. Let the Word of God and the Spirit of God be the power pack into your life into that day. And be different. Walk away around different. Number four, facing challenges. Jesus did it. Because he did, we can too. Jesus faced all sorts of challenges. We can do it too. For who has known the, what's that word? Mind of the Lord that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. Now how do we have the mind of Christ? I have it, I have it in two ways. In prayer, but I have it primarily of something I can put my hands on, and it's the Bible. I can get into the Bible and I can read all about Jesus and I can, all, I can read about him, but then I can learn and read him. Okay, I mentioned I've been meeting with Darren some. A lot of the meetings that, with the time that we spent is the paper stuff, the facts, the nitty gritty. Most of the time is I want to get to know him and I want him to get to know me. We need to get on the same page because the goal is the same. I need to know what he's thinking. I need to know what he's planning until the new pastor comes. And I need to be on board and I need to see and help and assist any way I can musically. Any other way beyond that. The way to do that, I have to spend time with him. I have to spend time with him. Okay, if you're going to get to this point in the battle for your mind and get, get some kinks out of your head inside, we need to know the Lord. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you to do something. Some of you, are reading your, you read your Bible every day and you, you have a schedule. Don't, don't disrupt your schedule. Maybe... Grab one of the Gospels again. You say, I've read them 3,000 times. Get into the Gospels once again and read through a Gospel. Pick the short one. Pick Mark. If you're busy, read, read through the Gospel the next few weeks. And let the mind of Jesus Christ spend, time with, spend some time with Jesus and walk with him again and heal with him again and cast out with him Speak the words that he did again. Learn Jesus Christ. Ah, that's incredible. Five, full accord and focus on the Lord and each other. If we get a right mindset here, all of a sudden it's not about us because Jesus said, quit thinking about yourselves, quit focusing on you. Start focusing on the goal, things of the Lord, and people of the Lord. Just people. Complete my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being in full of cord of one, of one mind. Church needs to have a purpose and a goal, and they not, just do not need to have it on paper. 
they need, we need to have it and it must be in practice. We need to be moving towards things of God and focusing on this is where we're going. When we get a new pastor, there's going to be a, there's going to be a new man. He is going to have and share and cast perhaps a new vision. I'm going to just say it, he will. Now, the direction or how that comes across, etc., we need to be praying, we need to be listening, we need to be seeing and understanding, and we need to jump on board when we, if we vote somebody in here and give it a shot here. I know I got Charlene who's on the search committee right now sitting here. You know I pray for you every day. I am praying for you every day. I pray for you every day. I don't pray for the others. I pray for you. <laughs> I pray for you. It's got, got, and I'm, I'm glad brother, uh, brother Peter said what he said today. I'm glad he shared the catch up where we are if you were in church. Afterwards, he read where they're at, and um, I'm, they're talking, you know, initially they say, oh, it could be a year. I, I'm praying this before Christmas. I, 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 I tell the elders that before Christmas, we'll have somebody. How are they going to do Darren setting up the pastors. They will be here, and they will run. Darren basically is the fallback guy. <laughs> we'll lead. Okay, the others are there, they're pastors too, so call them if you need something. They'll be at your disposal. Darren's got, Darren just, just, Darren just did, doesn't have Darren things that Darren did. Now Darren has lots of other things too. So, need to pray for him twice a day. Does. But we, right now, you know, we should just be praying for God's leading. And God will give us. God will give us what we need, what we genuinely need for our church. And let's then, let's get the transformer hooked up and go. Just do it. Fear attacks of our spirit on our mind, but Christ is our God. I think the biggest thing that, that really that destroys our mind and gets us focused on the wrong things, I think it is actually fear. I have watched. We just get afraid. We have, backed, we have backed way, way, way away from witnessing, from going door to door, from sharing Christ. We've backed off. And I'll tell you why. I can give you the grocery list of, of, of things. Everybody's heard it. Everybody, there's anger out there. Um, we don't do that because they may call the police. Uh, I've heard Christians tell me, Christian leaders tell me, we don't, we don't go out and visit people anymore because we just don't do that. People don't want anybody knocking on their door. All those things might be, might be true, but whether it's knocking on a door, or confronting at a mall, or visiting somebody in a park and sharing Christ and stopping them, we need to, we need to just, it's, it's been the fear of saying, I don't want to get arrested, I don't want doors slammed in my face, I don't want cussed out in an angry world, I don't want to approach a bunch of teenagers, they might call them a sexual predator. There's all sorts of garbage out there but did Jesus deal with all of that? Yes. And he just kept going. Just kept going. Just kept going. So share, God, here, here's what I want to say to you. If you will open your mind and your heart, you won't have to go, go out and grab and look for herds of people to be afraid of. God will bring people across your path. And they will open doors and there will be so many people that he has put in your way, you don't have time to have fear for anything. Because right. you'll be busy serving him and letting the Spirit of God serve him. You, your life will serve the Lord into other people. Connect. Be, be open to things of God. Look, I'm like you. I wrestle with that every day. I do. I do. I want, Dick Baker wants to be Dick Baker. Leave me alone. Yeah. I want to do what I want to do. But I wrestle with that, and you've got to work through that and renew your mind. And that's our hope. Susie.
You know what I do when it's so hot in July and August, and you, it, it, it's really so What do you hot. do in, hot, in the hot months? Okay, I say out loud in front of a whole bunch of people, I am sure glad I'm going to heaven because I can't take the heat anywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> well, amen, because they're walking around saying it sure is as hot as you know what. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be surprised You've got the answer. Me. Amen. People, it opens the door. I know. Amen. How and the peace know? of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your minds and hearts, your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Last one, fellowship with Christ happens when we place his laws in our minds. If you really want to connect to Christ after salvation, it's going to go through your mind. And then our heart. This is the covenant I will establish with the house. Sorry. I forgot you have to write. Thank you. All right, I will slow down. And I don't mind you saying so. Thank you. Thank you. Five is up. There's five. Yes, I do remember. I showed that, read it, and clicked it. Okay, I'll leave it up there. Because you have the Bible reference, don't you, written uh, there. So you can pick up on that later. Okay, are we good there? Yes? Anybody need to stop at 6? Anybody? Okay, here's 7. I'll leave it up there. Does, does anybody need me to stay there? Okay, we're good. All right. This is the covenant I will establish with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them in their, on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. I, I want to I be a great God's people. I really do. So what do I need to do? Allow God to write his principles, his laws, his word into my heart. The way I've got to do it, I've got to get in the Bible and I've got to memorize it. I've got to, I've got to take a red pencil, or if you're on a tablet, highlight it in whatever color that you, highlight the verse, highlight in colored pencil, red, scripture verses that come your way, power verses, go back and read them and memorize them. Because I'll tell you what, that will renew and strengthen and transform your life. This book, that, the book that you're holding right there and that I quote and I walk around with, that book is a powerful thing. God's Word. Good thing we grafted in. It's incredible. Amen. Yes, sir. That? Amen. 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 Somebody asked me last week, or not last week, asked me today, and we were just talking, and I saw how many we had for Easter. I went home yesterday, last week, before second service, I knew, and I looked our crowd over, and I said, Carol, I'm going to guess we had about 650. And it was like 675 I read in the bulletin this morning. We saw a ton of people we didn't know last week, did we? And I saw a ton of people seconds going in second service I did not know. And I looked at that person and I said, this, this can be our church quickly because they're already here. They don't dislike us. I mean, we walk in here, we're the most lovable sort. <laughs> we're really good. They're not afraid to come in. They know they've come for a reason. They've known somebody. They've done something. And you say, well, yeah, somebody came in from out of town. Well, that's true because some of our people went out and they'll be back. But I think, I think what we saw last week is the first leap back because we just, have to, we just have to encourage and find those people and drop them into our classes and we're rolling. We're doing good. I'm going to tell Darren that when I see you. 
Well, that was neat. But I said that to a person. They said, you know what, you're right. Because they're, just, they're the ones that are not hostile to us. You can go knock on their door, and they can come eat with you. Uh, quick question, uh, Angela. No, you had said something, that, you know, you were saying about the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It is. Okay, about Peter, let me wrap it up. You say, well, Peter was a real rat, you know, in doing that. But consider this. He was with Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration. There's only three disciples up there. He preached on the day of Pentecost, saw thousands saved. He preached again and had thousands again saved. He wrote First and Second Peter. He gave his life to the service of the Lord. And he was no different than you and me. He was a human, a sinner. He was saved by grace. When Jesus said to him, get behind me, Satan, he's saying, Peter, you need to get the kinks out of your thinking. You need to stop your stinking thinking. You need to refocus. Every now and then we need shaken up and we need to refocus. And the way to avoid that is daily get energized in the word of God in prayer and get transformed. A time of personal confrontation and contact has been sent not far from the crucifixion of Christ. A time of internal examination is always needed before big events. But that same time is needed for the daily life path that we walk. Next week's the killing fields of Jerusalem and it is about betrayal. And uh, this is a, this will be good. This will be good. Lord Jesus, thank you, you are good. You're wonderful. Bless this group. They're, this is an incredible army of the Lord. What a force we can be for Christ. And so, Lord, I pray that you'd stop, start to cast out fear and convict us and get us into your word and start being open to things of God and to people that you, souls you'll send our way to, to, to share Christ and help and mentor and be a blessing to we we'll give you thanks for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you.